Hello all. Hello all. I want to welcome you back to our lecture series. Today we'll be talking about polymerization of alkenes. Um, I have a beautiful quote for you here. Uh, it says, we cannot be separated in interest or divided in purpose. We stand together until the end. This quote falls from Woodrow T. Wilson. Woodrow T. Wilson was the former president of the United States. All right, let us take it off immediately from there. Addition polymers. What are, before we understand actually what is an addition polymers, let's talk about the term polymerization. Uh, what is polymerization? Polymerization is just a process in which two or more monomers, monomers are the simple unit, simple unit. We'll define it to simple unit. That's what we call the monomers here. The monomers I'm referring to are bonded chemical to form a large ones so the large ones are what we call the polymers the big large ones that make up the repeating units of the monomers which are the small ones so alkene molecules undergo addition polymerization with one another so small alkene molecules will combine together to form addition polymers of course this is a chemical reaction now double bonds usually remember alkenes have double bond when they do polymerize the double bonds are converted into single bonds as hundreds of these molecules bond and form long chains, long chains of carbons of tens of thousands. Now, this long product, this long chain product, long chain bigger product is what we call an addition polymer. That's what we call an addition polymer. A good example, the commonest, and in fact, one of the earliest polymers that was discovered by mankind is the polyethylene. Polyethylene which is used in making a lot of the plastics, plastic bags, and then the trash, plastic tra for, uh, plastic for trash bag and for food and all the rest of that. Now, what is happening here? Remember, this is, et this is an ethylene molecule called ethene. Ethene is the, is the IOPAC name, is ethene. The old name is the ethylene molecules. Now, a bunch of ethylene molecules here have about one, two, three, four represented, but it's thousands of ethylene molecules come together under intense pressure heat and it is usually catalyzed a, a catalyst comes to facilitate the reaction now remember these ethylene molecules are called are the monomers because they are the simple unit they are the simple units which combine together now when they combine together to form these large molecules which we call the polymer now ethylene ethylene combines to form polyethylene polyethylene means poly means many ethylene so poly means many you know is a greek word poly means many so, combines to form polyethylene molecules. And polyethylene molecule is a pol is what is an addition polymer that is made up of several thousands of these ethylene molecules. So, this is what we call addition polymers. Now, of course, let's now begin to define most of those. Now, what is a polymer? Polymers are very large molecules that are made up of repeating monomeric units. Remember here, the repeating monomeric units, we're talking about what? The repeating monomeric unit are the simple unit that I already talked about. So, they are the monomers. So, a monomer is the starting material that becomes the repeating unit of polymers. Now, of course, they are usually represented by what? The repeating unit based on the what? The formula of the, of the monomer. Remember, ethylene, of course, is CH2, CH2, double bonded. Now, if it forms polymer, look at how we represent it here. You form a polymer, which is CH to CH2. This dash at this point shows you that it is, it keeps getting connected to a lot of them. And N means this could be hundreds or several, hundreds of thousands of what these carbons are. It's actually what you have in this repeating unit. So this, this is, these are what we call addition polymers. Of course, what are the char characteristics of polymer can be modified? by using akins with different groups yes you can form depending on the type of polymer and the characteristics that you want to get from it you can modify it by attaching groups what to the alkene itself or, and remember this attachment must be on the double bond because it is the ability of akin to have the double bond that is that makes it to be able to undergo polymerization look at what happens here now of course if you remove one of the hydrogens of 18 ethylene molecule or 18 molecule and put cl you have the vinyl chloride vinyl chloride can polymerize as well to form 
the polyvinyl chloride. Of course, polyvinyl chloride, what we call industrially, or by threatening PVC, which is used in making, you know, the PVC tubes. Since lead tubes are no more common these days, the PVC tubes are seen to be better and less harmful. So this is the polyvinyl chloride, which is the polymer, which is the polymeric unit of this polymer. And then the, the monomeric unit is the vinyl chloride, is the vinyl chloride. Now, what about a copolymer? Now, at times, a polymer can be formed by two different monomeric units. Remember, we talked about the we talked about uh, uh, the, the polyethylene that is formed from the monomeric unit of ethylene. We now talked about the vinyl chloride that is formed the monomeric unit, uh, the vinyl chloride monomeric unit, which combines to form the polyethylene. Now, remember, these ones are from the same type of monomeric unit. Now, what about when you form polymers from two or three different types of polymeric unit? That type of poly polymers are what we call copolymers. So the addition polymers form by the reaction of two different types of monomeric units. So in this case, we have a good example here. If vinyl chloride combines with vinyl dichloride, what do you think happens? It forms saran wraps. And saran wraps very common saran wraps are very common they are used primarily in food wraps if are very common particularly here in the united states so here now you have two different monomers the vinyl chloride like we talked about here and the vinyl vinyl dichloride now the difference between these two is that the vinyl dichloride has what two chlorine units well this one has one chlorine unit at the end of the day both of them form the saran the saran itself which is a polymer and which has very important domestic use. So now I have a list of a lot of these polymers here. Uh, the, the monomeric unit, the polymers themselves, the thread name and the uses. So this is ethylene. Of course, ethylene is used for, po the polymer name is polyethylene. The thread name is still polyethylene, usually. And then it is used in making bottles, plastic bars, film, food wraps, and all the rest of them. We have the polyvinyl chloride, of course. This is what the vinyl chloride here, used in making the P the name is PVC thread name. It's used in making synthetic leathers, floor ties, garden hoses, water pipes, a lot of them. We have the poly we have the propylene. The propylene here, the polymer name is polypropylene. Used in making the, the, the thread name is also polypropylene. It's used in making carpets, pipes, bottles, artificial. This should be artificial turf and all the rest of them. And then we have other ones which include uh, the Teflon. The Teflon, the polymer name is polytetrafluoroethylene. Yeah, so because this is tetrafluoroethylene, it has four fluorine units there. With the thread name common in Teflon used in making uh, non-sticky pan coating in utensils, plastic parts, plumbers, step, hard valves. We also have polyvinyl dichloride. Remember, the polyvinyl dichloride is what you use in making the saran wraps like we talked about, the food wrap. We also have polyacrylonitrile. Polyacrylonitrile. This is acrylonitrile is the monomeric unit. Remember, if you want to get the polymeric from all of this, just look at before the polymer, you get the poly. So this is acrylonitrile. So when it becomes many, it becomes polyacrylonitrile. The thread name varies. It can be called olon, acrylan, or chrysalan. It is used in making fabrics, textiles, and carpet. And then polyvinyl acetate. This is the vinyl acetate. Vinyl acetate can be used in making, uh, the thread name is polyvinyl acetate. It can be used in making adhesives, which is gum, like the, the, the gums itself, the, uh, or the glue, rather the glues. It can be used in making chewing gum and then paint. And finally, the one on the list is polymethyl metacrylate. Uh, the thread name is lucid or plexiglass. It's used in making plastic sheets blocks, airplane windows, contact lenses, and then fiber optic cables. These are the common uses. And I, I will advise you to know some of these uses because some of them cannot actually jump in into a few of my exams and ask multiple choice questions, basically. All right, that is usually where I ask this question as multiple choice. I don't usually ask you a lot of these in, 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 uh, in written part, but I, I can do that as well. So just for you to know the uses and then the polymeric unit and then the monomeric unit of these addition polymers. Then we now go to the last thing we need to talk about today, the biological polymers. Of course, we've been talking about polymers that, that are synthesized outside the body. 
poly, biological polymers are those polymers that are produced in the living organism. You can find them in living things, particularly. Now, these biological polymers play an important role, particularly by the time we begin to get into the last part of this class, the biochemistry part, which is usually the last part of this class. Now, there are three men, uh, the three men biological polymers we're going to be talking about are one, the carbohydrate. The carbohydrate or the polysaccharide. The polysaccharide are built from the monomeric unit of monosaccharide. Of course, the common polysaccharide you encounter every day are the starch, the cellulose, the glycogen. There are other ones like there are other ones like uh, the chitin and all the rest of them but these are the common ones that we're going to talk about they have a lot of, of course starch is called plant uh, uh sorry starch is found in the plant starch and cellulose are found in the plant where glycogen is found in the animal and so glycogen is called animal starch so they are built from the monomeric unit of the monosaccharide and the monosaccharide are the glucose the fructose the galactose there are a lot of them but these are the common ones that you need to know and the proteins themselves are built from the monomeric unit of amino acid there are about 20 natural occurring amino acid which form the building block of this protein so the monomeric unit of pro of proteins are the what amino acid and then we have the dna and the rna the dna and the rna are the informational molecules they are built from the repeating unit of or the monomeric unit of the nucleotide of course, that is where they are built from. Of course, every nucleotide is built from a nitrogenous base, a phosphate group attached, and and a, rib, and a, a ribose sugar. If it is deoxyribose sugar, you find that in DNA. If it is ribose sugar, you find that in RNA. Of course, so these are common examples of these biological polymers that you must have to memorize and know their name, the polymers, and then their monomeric unit. Of course, the, I have I gave you some examples here. Hemoglobin is a common uh, protein, or you can say polypeptide we find in the body. So hemoglobin is the protein you find in the body, uh, which plays an important role in transport of what? In transport of oxygen in the body. So that's why I just drew that to give you an example of a protein here. And then I have DNA too. The DNA is the double-stranded helix made up of two uh, two double strands of each nucleotide unit combined together and foods on each other so this is the dna molecule so these are the biological polymers that you have to know you have to know particularly when it comes to these biological polymers these are the ones you need to know and like i said again you will likely see most of these ones in the exam because they are much more relevant in what you're going to be talking about particularly by the time we get to the biochemistry part of this class and having said that we've come to the end of this lecture Thank you for listening. Bye at this point.